Thank you for tuning in to learn about soils and what homeowners need to know about how soils can impact their basements. A little bit about me, my name is Alan Barrows and I'm a Senior Conservation Specialist with the Waukesha County Department of Parks and Land Use. I've worked for Waukesha County since 2002 and am the lead reviewer of soil data with regard to basement and groundwater separation for new basement construction. I will be discussing the following topics in this presentation. The background on land use and soil mapping in Waukesha County, why keeping basements out of the groundwater is important, how soil information is collected and used to prevent basement flooding, and lastly, what measures can be taken to manage groundwater around the home. Many years ago, Waukesha County was commonly called Cow County, USA because of the high number of cows that were raised here. Waukesha County had very fertile soils and abundant open space and water resources available, which made it a very popular and successful farming area. This is a map that shows the urban and residential land uses in Waukesha County in 1963, which are shown in red. You'll see that the urban and residential areas were concentrated along the eastern tier of the county, around the city of Waukesha in the center, and around the numerous lakes where people have been living, recreating, and enjoying those areas for a long time. In the 1960s, the U.S. Department of Agriculture Soil Conservation Service completed a soil survey of Milwaukee and Waukesha counties. This was a comprehensive survey where soil scientists described the soil properties of these two counties to a depth of five feet. It was largely geared around describing soils for agricultural purposes, but the information is very useful for other uses and is the basis for the soil maps that we still use today. The soil maps have been made digital and are available through interactive mapping systems hosted by the USDA and by Waukesha County. This is a map that shows the urban and residential land uses in Waukesha County in 2010. You'll see that the urban and residential land uses have expanded significantly over 50 years, a trend that has continued over the last 10 years from when this map data was published. This is a map that shows areas of Waukesha County where the soil maps indicate that the seasonal high groundwater is within three feet of the ground surface. This is important information because in Wisconsin, people like to have basements under their homes, which are eight to nine feet deep, and those basements are used for a number of purposes, including living space. If groundwater is within three feet of the ground surface and a basement is proposed, that can lead to potential problems. Over time, basements have, in some cases, become finished rooms and can be quite nice spaces for entertaining, living, working, and for storage. This makes preventing the risk of basement flooding significantly more important. And in some cases, these areas may not be covered by a homeowner's insurance policy. A few examples of issues that can occur when a basement has water problems include flooding, as shown in the picture on the left, where chalk marks indicate how deep water has gotten in this basement over time. The middle picture shows wet basement walls in a constantly running sump pump, which relies on electricity to operate. And when the power goes out, they don't work without backup power. The third photo on the right shows where sump pump discharge is directed 
to outside of the house, which can create disagreements between neighbors and challenges for municipalities where water is flowing over the sidewalks and into the streets, especially in winter when ice can form and cause slippery conditions. The common causes of basement flooding include groundwater seepage, site grading, sewer backups, and from surface water such as floodplains and flooded kettles. Some areas may have more than one of these causes, which makes solving the problem even more difficult and expensive. Here are some additional photos of the challenges that flooding creates when site drainage and shallow groundwater is not fully considered when building homes. The photo in the upper right shows four pipes that have been installed to the road ditch to convey downspout and sump pump water. In 2005, Waukesha County adopted new site drainage standards to address the issues around structure protection, safety, and groundwater separation for basements. All right, so now let's get to how soil information is used to prevent the issues that I just reviewed. When describing soils, there are a lot of terms used and can seem complicated. However, it doesn't have to be. Soils are described in horizons or layers as you go deeper into the ground, from O to A to E to B to C to R. Also, there are terms used to describe how the soil was formed over time, and the terms that apply to soils in Waukesha County are included on the left. These are the types of descriptions and terms that you'd learn more about if you take a soils class in high school or college. One of the terms that is used when considering soils for basement construction is seasonal high groundwater. Groundwater fluctuates over time due to the amount of rain and snow that falls on the ground. It is important to know how high the groundwater can get in the soil during the wettest times of the year, and that is why having an understanding of how to determine that high groundwater condition is so important early in the home planning process. To determine the seasonal high groundwater depth in a soil, we use what's called the USDA soil classification system. This is the same soil description method that's used for septic systems and wetland delineations. A benefit to using this method is that it can be done entirely in the field, meaning that you don't have to take soil samples to a laboratory to make the determination. The soil characteristics that are documented in the field include depth, color, texture, structure, as well as a number of other characteristics which are important for understanding how water moves through the soil. In Wisconsin, this work is done by professionals called certified soil testers and professional soil scientists. The procedures are as simple as one, two, three. Step one, dig a hole within 50 feet of the proposed basement. Remember that you need to call diggers hotline ahead of time to make sure that there aren't buried utilities in the area. Step two, is to describe the soils using the USDA soil classification system. The book that you see the soil tester holding in step two is called a Munsell chart. It allows the soil professional to match the color of the soil to chips on the page for accurately and consistently identifying the soil's color. Step three is to fill out the soil evaluation form for each hole. A map is required to document where the soil test was done. One of the key pieces of information that a soil professional will be looking for in the soil profile is what is called redoxomorphic features. Redoxomorphic is a combination of two words, reduction and oxidization. Our soils have minerals in them, such as iron. When the iron is under water in the soil for a while, it will begin to rust, similar to if you had some nails in a glass jar that you left out in the rain. If you leave the nails in the water for a week, then dumped out the water in the jar, the nails will rust. The iron in the soil reacts the same way, 
and that is called oxidization, and it leaves red, or what we call high chroma colors. If the iron in the soil is underwater for a long period of time, it will turn gray, and that is called reduction, or low chroma colors. The slide shows how the colors of the soils are matched up with the color chips in the Munsell book to determine the hue, value, and chroma, which is then documented on the soil evaluation form. The term modeling is used to describe color variabilities in the soils within a soil horizon. Both the color of the horizon is documented and the colors of the models or the less dominant features. The models in the soil shown here are indicators of seasonal high groundwater. There are specific pages in the Munsell chart for the reduced soil colors that are encountered when soils are very wet. These colors are referred to as glade and could be gray, blue, or even green. Here are some additional photographs of soils with reduction, oxidization, and glay caused by shallow groundwater within one foot of the ground surface. These soils are called hydric soils. Soils that have groundwater between one foot and three feet below the ground surface are called hydric inclusion soils. These terms are used in the soil maps and you can see them on the county's interactive mapping system. This photograph shows modeling in a soil that was created by river deposits. You can see the alternating red and gray streaks, indicating times when the fine particles were deposited when the river was flowing slowly, and more sandy deposits when the river was flowing more rapidly. After the soil information has been collected, now it's time to use the information in designing a basement drainage system. We require that basement floors be one foot above the seasonal high groundwater. Why one foot? That's because under your basement floor is a foundation footing that the basement walls sit on. The footing has a drainage system that is connected to the sump pump. To keep the groundwater out of the footing drain and the sump pump, we require one foot of separation so that the footing drains don't get overwhelmed. Here is a diagram showing one foot of separation and the seasonal high groundwater in blue. We also have a two foot vertical separation from the floodplain to the lowest opening of the home so flood water doesn't get into the building. Finally, we have a 50 foot horizontal setback from the floodplain to keep structures and its residents safe from the high water conditions. Here's a photo of a construction crew preparing to pour the concrete footings for a new home. The gray rectangular plastic form serves as a form for the footing and also as the drainage system. Wash stone is put around the footing drains to allow the drainage to occur. If any water was to get alongside the basement walls or under the basement floor. When an architect prepares a home plan, they will provide a detailed drawing of the basement walls, foundation footing, basement floor, and the stone needed to keep the basement dry. It's common for a waterproof material to be applied to the outside of the foundation wall as another measure to keep the basement walls dry. By illustrating the results of the soil testing on the new home plans from the architect, it will show where areas of the home may be at risk for having a shallow groundwater condition in the basement. In this slide, 
the lower left corner of the home will be two feet into the seasonal high water table. To address this portion of the home in the seasonal high water table, an engineer has designed a system to intercept the shallow groundwater and route it to the yard before it can get into the footing drain and the sump pump. It uses gravity to work, not electricity, so it's a safe and effective method for addressing the potential of basement flooding. Foundation drainage systems rely on being clean to function properly. Here's a photo in the upper left of where silt deposits have accumulated in one of the footing bleeders of an existing home. As a result, water was backing up along the foundation walls and causing a wetness problem. To remediate this condition, the basement floor along the foundation was cut out with a concrete saw and a new drainage system was installed to alleviate the wet conditions in the basement. This is very labor intensive and can be expensive. Some of the technical challenges in remediating wet basements in an existing home include the amount of water that can be located around the foundation in sandy and organic soils, a lack of a good spot to discharge groundwater from around the home if there isn't an outlet for a sump pump or a gravity drain tile, water flowing laterally or sideways toward the home, and shallow bedrock conditions. In summary, basement flooding for new homes is preventable, and the county procedures which I've discussed are a prevention tool. Collecting soil information with regard to the depth to seasonal high groundwater early in the home design process is necessary to avoid costly changes and delays in construction. By following these procedures, it serves to protect the home builder, the buyer of the home, and the seller. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. My contact information is provided. Please feel free to contact me with any questions or comments.